Pavić i Pavljuk. Deset dana molitve još uvek Još uvek počeli smo, mislim, u četvrtak i nastavlja se svako veće u sedam sati, tako svi smo pozvani da se uključimo u taj Zoom program. Sestra Sonja Kecman, evo vidim te sad, želimo kao crkva izraziti naše saočešće za tvojeg oca što je preminuo i nadamo se da ćemo opet ga videti kada je Hrist dođe. Oću posebno se zahvaliti našem tehničkom timu jer juče smo imali snega malo i Malo teže je bilo doći u crkvu ili ići iz crkve i tako želim da se posebno zahvalim našem tehničkom timu što su došli tako da smo imali live streaming da za sve one koje nisu mogli da dođeju da su mogli da vide predavanje juče. Ja mislim to uvek zaboravimo na tehnički tim jer oni su u pozadini, ne vidimo ih, samo čujemo kada je neka greška ili nešto, ali ali trebamo se više puta zahvaliti njima. Cornerstone parents and children meeting right after second service here by the piano. So Cornerstone parents and children short meeting right after second service. Popodnevni časovi počinju opet. Sad smo prošli skroz probleme od COVID i malo smo se već naučili da posle COVID-a kako da živimo i sada opet ćemo imati popodnevne časove subotu popodne. Počnemo danas s bratom Sandraćom, tako svi smo pozvani da budemo ovde danas u pet sati na popodnevni čas. Također nastavlja 27. Januara, nećemo imati svake subote u početku, tako da zamolit ću vas da metnete u svoje kalendare, da ponesete vaš buleten kući, da se uvek setite kada imamo popodnevni čas. Tako imamo danas u pet sati i onda opet u subotu 27. januara ćemo opet imati popodnevni čas. A također 27. januara su zamoljeni sve vođe subotne škole i svi učitelje subote škole da donesaju svoj ručak i da ostanaju na sastanak od sastanak će da počne u tri sata, završit će u pet kada je popodnevni čas počne. Tako svi vođe i učitelji subotne škole da imaju u planu da u subotu 27. januara donesaju svoj ručak i ostanaju na jedan meeting. Crkveni hor je zamoljen da pođe dole u dolnju prostoriju, da se ima kratku pripremu, a drugi deo ćemo početi za pet minuta. Hvala na vašu pažnju.
Jedan. Okliči Bogu zemlja sva. Pesma broj jedan. Sobotni blagoslov želim svima. Danjašnji uvodni stihove se nalaze u Rimljanima 8, 3 i 4. Jer što zakonu beše nemoguće, jer beše oslabljen telom, posla Bog sina svojega u obličju tela grehnog i za greh usudi greh u telu. Da se pravda zakonu ispuni u nama, koji ne živimo po telu, nego po duhu. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Today's verses are found in Romans 8, 3, and 4. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who, don't, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Po mogućnosti, kaknut ćemo za molitvu. Oče naš na nebesima, hvala ti za ovaj subotan dan, hvala ti što smo ovdje ko crkva, pomozi onima koji su bolesni i koji ne mogu da dođu ovdje, Pomozi danas da razumijemo tvoju reč od našeg govornika i hvala ti još jednom za ovu crkvu i što možemo da budemo zajedno da proslovimo tebe. U Hristu ime to te sve molimo. Amen. Dobro jutro. Da li neko zna za ovaj časopis? Does anybody know this magazine? A couple of people? Good. Um, does anyone know when was the first issue of this magazine? Da li neko zna kad je bio prvi časopis izdan? Any guesses? 
1930s, 100 years ago, 1906. During this time, powerful political voices in America were calling for a national Sunday observance law. U ovo vreme, močni politički glasovi o Americi pozivali su na nacionalni zakon o svetkovanje njedelje. Adventists worked tirelessly and successfully to call attention to the dangers that this law would pose to all people of faith. Adventisti neumorno, ali i uspješno su radili kako bi skrenuli pozornost na opasnosti koji bi ovaj zakon predstavljao za sve ljude vjere. Today, the threats to religious freedom may look a little different, but they are just as troubling. Danas prijetnje, prijetnje vjerskoj slobodi mogu izgledati drugačije, ali su jednako zabrinjavajuće. Now, more than ever, we need to share our unique biblical perspectives with people of influence in society, lawmakers, judges, community leaders, and leaders of other faiths. faiths. Sada više nego ikad moramo podijeliti našu jedinstvenu biblijsku perspektivu ljudima od uticaja, zakonodavci, suci, vođe, zajednica i vođe drugih vjera. So today, sorry, uh, each year one million copies of Liberty magazine are put into the hands of leaders in government and community, communities across the division. Svake godine milijun časopisa vjerske slobode su stavljene u ruke ovih vođa. Today, January 13th, churches in the North American division are collecting offering to support religious freedom. Danas, crkve u Sjevernoj američkoj diviziji skupljaju dar da podržaju vjerske slobode. So we have a video that I wanted to share before we collect our offering. Um, it will be in English, but please watch the video. No one should have to choose between staying faithful to God or keeping their job. But for more than 50 years, that's been the reality. By holding fast to the Sabbath truth, many Seventh-day Adventists have lost jobs, been denied employment, or faced workplace discrimination. But God is faithful. This Religious Liberty Sabbath, we celebrate a Supreme Court win, a legal victory that provides new, stronger protection for all people of faith in the workplace. Adventist lawyer and religious liberty leader, Alan Reinick played a key role in the case. Tell us a little bit about Groff and how we got to where we got to today. Well, Gerald Groff was working as a rural route carrier in uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And he'd been there a couple of years when uh, the post office did their contract with Amazon to start delivering packages on Sunday. The first year, his postmaster accommodated him not to uh, do the deliveries during the holiday season. But after that, really put her foot down and said, uh, you know, Nick, we're not going to do this next year. You're going to have to deliver the packages. Graf found a smaller post office that wasn't part of the Amazon contract. He gave up his seniority to transfer to the smaller post office, but that Amazon contract caught up with him. Mm. Uh, he was there for a couple of years, and during that time, uh, he was written up, he was uh, counseled about eight times, he was harassed, and yet through it all, he never violated his beliefs, did not deliver on, on Sunday, uh, but finally had to resign his position just shy of being terminated, the final straw. On April 18th, 2023, the Supreme Court heard the case of Groff versus DeJoy. I'm really struck by that because we have amicus briefs here by many representatives of many minority religions, Muslims, Hindus, Orthodox Jews, Seventh-day Adventists, and they all say that that is just not true and that Hardison has violated their right to religious liberty. Are they wrong? On June 29, 2023, the Supreme Court ruled unanimously in favor of Groff. The decision, written by Justice Alito, clarified an important section of the civil rights law known as Title VII. Now, employers must accommodate the religious practices of their employees, unless they can show that it would substantially burden the overall conduct of their business. 
the biggest problem that Seventh-day Adventists have in the workplace is not getting accommodated uh, for Sabbath. And the law has been way too weak for too long. So this decision uh, will restore some semblance of balance between the interests of the employer in getting the job done and the needs of, of, a, of an Adventist who needs time off on Sabbath. So by strengthening the law uh, that requires accommodation, hopefully fewer Adventists will lose their jobs. This decision means that one of the highest religious liberty priorities for the Adventist Church in the United States has finally come to fruition. Namely, church members have a, have a good shot of getting an accommodation uh, in the workplace in a way that they haven't had since really the law was passed in 1964. But this isn't the end of the story. Religious freedom in America, on many different fronts, is still facing tremendous challenges. Your support for the Religious Liberty Ministry of the Church allows us to defend religious liberty in the courts, send Liberty Magazine to judges and elected leaders, advocate directly with lawmakers, and support church members who face religious discrimination. Thank you for sharing Liberty Magazine in your community, and thank you for your financial support. But thank you most of all for your prayers, as together we work to defend this precious God-given liberty. Uh, so our offering today will go to sponsor Liberty Magazine subscriptions to high-level government officials, federal, state, and provincial judges, and prominent social and religious leaders throughout North America. Nash dar danas cheichi za sponsoniranje preplate na časopise visokim vodjama širon sjeverne Amerike. To support the North American Division Litigation Fund, resources needed to defend and preserve our religious liberty in court when necessary. Za potporu fonda za sporove sjeverno američke divizije, sredstva potrebne za odbranu i očuvanje naše vjerske slobode na sudu kada je to potrebno. And a portion of the offering is returned to our local union to help in religious liberty promotion and education. Ideo dara se vraća našoj lokalnoj uniji da pomogne promociji vjerske slobode i obrazovanja. So now I'd like to call the deacons to come forward to collect our offering. And while uh, we are collecting, we will sing song number 11. Zamolila bi džakone da dođu da skupe naš dar i dok skupljamo dar, pjevat ćemo pjesmu broj 11. to stand for prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another Sabbath day where we are free to gather together to praise and worship your name. Please help us to continue to fight for religious liberty and to stand on the side of truth no matter the consequences. Please use this offering to continue the work that we saw happening in the video today. Please bless the hands that gave so generously. We thank you and we praise you in your precious son's name. Amen. Tačku, pesmu od naše naj, najmlađi, Deci Hor. Izvolite. Great singing, guys. Great singing. Now, if this was a concert, I'd say, let's get another round of applause. But you did that for the glory of God. So we're going to have reverence and just say amen. Now, what is my children's story about today? What, is, what do you think 
from this slide, the story's going to be about, yeah. Question? Oh. <laughs> you pick the one word that it is exactly about, even though there's only one, like, there's a bunch of words up there. Now, why do you think I picked questions? Yeah, go ahead. You can answer them. <laughs> I mean, that would be the normal thing. Yeah, normal. Who are you talking to? Like, that's, we're slightly unusual here. Logan, my guy. So the uh, story is questions or about questions. Now, the reason why I chose this story is because I was thinking, when I was your age, what was the best thing that I was good at? Like, what was the thing that I was the best at? That's what my question was. Well, yeah, that was question. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that is actually a common, common in, in your age group. Um, when we're young, when I was young, I wanted to know how things worked. Dad, why does that engine drive those wheels? How does a car work? Uh, what, why does the horn make that sound? Um, buttons, what are those, you know? And why are they on everything? Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Who, who, who eats peanut butter, butter and jelly sandwiches? You eat, you, you don't like it that much. You don't like it either? You're gonna hate this next slide. You're gonna really not like it. But I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Now, there are people, oh, who, actually, everyone here goes to school? Raise your hand if you go to school. All right, almost, almost. I know you maybe do. All right, so we all go to school. Now, do we go where there's a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds? Not everyone's a Christian in your class? Raise your hand if yes, don't raise your hand if no. Raise your hand if everyone in your class is Christian. Everyone in your class is Christian. Okay, so maybe this won't, my, my next question, since I went to school in elementary, uh, in elementary and high school, I went to public school. So in my class, there were people with uh, backgrounds that were different than mine. So I was raised Christian, like you guys, and then there were Muslims, and then there were Jews, and then there were also people that weren't raised believing in God at all. And, you know, going through school, we all do the same thing. Why? Ask questions. Why this? Why that? What about this? What about that? How does that work? How about this? Now, one of my friends, who was not raised Christian, and was not raised believing in God in, in general. He was really into science. Who likes science class? Raise your hand for yes, don't raise your hand for no. All right, so 50-50, 50-50 is good. Okay, 51%, look at that. Um, science class was this guy's strong point. He really liked science class. And he said, Joel, I don't understand. Now this is grade seven. Who's in grade seven? No one? Okay. Okay, well, this was grade seven, and uh, the teacher was talking about um, space, the universe, planets. Now, how many questions did we all have about those? A lot? A little? Thousands of questions, man. A billion questions. More than that. That's, that's too low. Go higher. What's bigger than a billion? A bi bazillion what? It, well, that's a big number. I don't even know. Googleplex. That's a smart answer. Okay, so there's that many answers for the universe. And my friend turns to me in class and goes, Joel, how can you believe in God when we know all the science behind how all this works? I don't have the clicker. Can we go to the next slide? Oh, I got the clicker. Oh, that looks good. Okay, this is a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I said, I said, Aaron, his name was Aaron. I won't give you his last name so you can't Facebook him. Um, I said, Aaron, do you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Same question I just asked you. He said, yes, I do. I said, do you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every morning before school and sometimes for lunch? He goes, yes, I do. I said, do you make your own peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? He goes, no. I said, what? 
who makes them for you? He goes, my mom. And I go, oh. So you wake up in the morning, you go downstairs, you look in your lunchbox, and there's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and you just assume your mom made it? And he goes, yeah, yeah. how else is the peanut butter and jelly sandwich going to get there? I said, so you're going to look at the planets and the stars and just assume that nothing created that? That that just happened? So your peanut butter and jelly sandwich was made by your mom, even though you didn't see her make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But the stars and the planets and the universe. And I was just asking a question. Just a question. I had many more. How many planets are there? Go ahead. Um, eight, but Pluto used to be considered nine. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're in grade three? Also, also, the universe was made by something called... A you know what? Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Please don't spoil it. Please. It's part of my story. Okay. <laughs> so, from the peanut butter and jelly sandwich to the planets and stars, my friend Aaron goes, Joel, that's not the same. That's not the same. This is a picture, if you guys want to look at it, of the actual size um, of the planets to the sun. The sun is on the far right. The sun's on the far right. And that's a, okay, I can't point at the screen because I might burn out the pixels, but that first little speck, that's a planet. And then that's a planet. And then this is Earth. And then that's a planet. And these are all moons. And then that's a planet. And that's a moon. And these are even smaller dust that are moons. And then this is a ring of comet, well, little asteroid stuff. And it's a planet. And then this is a planet. And then that's a moon. And then this is a planet. And then what the, what are these? I actually don't know what those are. That's my qu Anyone know? Anyone know what those are? Asteroid belt. That's good. Eh, probably. So, our teacher goes from this slide to this slide, and now I have more questions. And so does Aaron. Aaron goes, Joel, Joel, you have a good point. I assumed my mom made my sandwich in the morning for my breakfast and my lunch, but I didn't see her. So did she make the sandwich? I didn't see the stars and planets get created, but that, does that mean that they weren't created? They were. They were. Okay, question. Aaron, this is a no, again, oh, okay, another question. I have to, I have to wrap this up, this is long. There's a, more questions for your dad to answer and not me. I, <laughs> look at that, he actually knows. So I'll ask Samuel Lakata, he'll know. Uh, ask any Lakata, they'll probably know. Um, ask my dad, ask your dad. There's a lot of people to ask, just not me right now. Uh, keep asking questions. Where was I? Aaron and, and, the, and the sandwich. I said, Aaron, what if you went to Mars and found a sandwich? Who made the sandwich? Or was it made by accident? Did it just happen? Did the bread and the peanut butter and the jelly, all of a sudden, there's a big wind, and then the atoms collided, and then boom, sandwich. That'd be really cool. The probability of that happening is like 0%, all right? Probably not zero, there's a probably real mathematical. But essentially, that's the question. There's just more of them. There's so much more questions, guys, and at your age, keep asking them. Exactly, good question. Next question is this, who can read that? Let's go, read it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can you go up here and read it? Just read that out loud. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Matthew, Matthew 7, 7. Oh, thank you for the reading. Amen. So we can see in the Bible that it's telling us to ask questions. It's telling us to seek for those answers. It's telling us to knock and the door will be open for us. Now, that's the end of my story, but what I want you to do, there's a little bit of homework. I know, teachers, right? Always give me homework. Uh, you're going to go home and ask your parents five questions you've never asked them before. 
that you really want to know the answers to. And you have to give them time to answer them. And they might not give you the right answer. I need you to look it up to make sure that that's right. Or maybe it's not. Maybe this is a long journey that we're going to take through our lives where we're going to keep asking questions and we're going to keep looking for answers. And that's exactly what I take from Matthew 7, 7. I will always seek to be given the answers. I will always knock so that the door might be open for me. Yes, you haven't, uh, yes, Hannah, what's up? That's a good point. All right, amen to that. Google's not always right. With that, we can go back to our seats, all right? Just don't forget to ask questions. Pre što čujemo reći što će naš ovaj govornik, jutro se da, da podeli s nama. Naš crkveni hor će da podeli s nama pesmu koju su spremili. Izvolite.
wieczne. To je bio tas oca nebesko, koji prima me kasi na svom. Život Hristu Vi znate da je ova subota, subota u okviru deset dana molitve. Mi smo počeli u sredu, tako da ćemo danas, evo u okviru bogosluženja, imati nekoliko molitvi. Ne znam koliko se sećate kada su počele ove deset dana molitve u januaru. Ja sam nekako vraćao filmu nazad kada je to počelo, mislim negde pre deset godina, da je to ideja generalne konferencije, da počnemo godinu sa deset dana molitve. I ova tema... Ja sad ne sjećam se baš svake teme, ali nekako mislim da ova tema je vrlo važna za čoveka 21. veka. Ja bih pročitao samo jedan deo od deset dana. Ovo je bilo prvi dan. Kaže, naši životi su prepuni toliko stvari kojima želimo da se bavimo u društvu koje je ludo vođeno konzumerizmom i marketingom. Iako se namamimo... Lako se namamimo da verujemo da što više imamo, to smo srećniji. A onda kaže i tako, očajničiko pokušavamo da uskladimo našu želju da služimo Bogu sa beskrajnom potragom za posedovanjem sve više i više stvari i slažete se da je ovo problem 21. veka. I evo nekako sve molite svaki dan su išle u ovom pravcu. Ja bih želeo ovog jutra da se pomolimo u dve molitve na kolenima u ovom pravcu. Da, prva molitva će biti Žika Marković i onda druga molitva će biti David Selimović. Kleknut ćemo na naša kolena i uputit ćemo molitve. Sad čekajte samo mikrofon.
Господе и Боже наш, кој си на небесима, у име Твога Сина, Исуса Христа, нашег Спасителја и Духа Светога Утешителја, ми данас, као деца и народ Твој, клечимо пред Твојим светим лицем у молитви да Ти нама помогнеш на првом месту, да будемо верни Тебе како треба по Твој светој речи. U ovoj vreme molitve, Gospode, pomozi nama da pomognemo onima koji su slabi, nemoćni, koji traže tvoju pomoć, ali nisu sposobni dovoljno. Gospode, blagoslovi tvoju crkvu, blagoslovi tvoju svetu reč koja će se propovedati sada. Amin. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us into your sanctuary here today. Lord, we know that amidst all our priorities and all the jobs, the work, even our families, they ask much of us, Lord, but you only ask for our hearts and for us to always constantly dwell on you and what you want from us. We pray that we may keep your priorities to be our priorities in all that we do, that we may not be distracted, we may not be taken to here or to there, but that in all times and all things, that when we are called and when we are asked, that we praise you first and foremost and make you the light of our lives. Regardless of where we go or who we meet, that nothing may tear us away from your side, Lord, because we know that you laid down so much for us and you only ask for so little in return. We pray that we may be able to be consistent in this in all things, to not be distracted, to not be pulled away, but to stay close by you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Evo sa nama ovog vikenda u jednoj mini seriji predavanja imali smo sinoć, danas ujutru i popodne je profesor i pastor Aleksandar Santrač. Ne znam koliko od vas poznajete Aleksandra, evo možete dignuti ruku, baš da ga poznajete, da ste ga nekada slušali, evo imamo nekoliko ruku. Neko mi je rekao da se seća Santrač iz vremena kad ima onako crnu bradu, ovaj... Pa kaže, malo je drugačije, možda kao Joel, tako od prilike, ali eto, vremenom, malo to i promeni boju. Što se tiče Santra, ću ja da kažem moje jedno lično iskustvo. Ja kada sam bio student, Aleksandar Santra je bio gost, govornik, došao iz Pariza, on je bio tada pastor u našoj jugoslovenskoj crkvi u Parizu. Ja sam ga vozio na evangelizaciju i tako smo pričali, kaže o meni, što ti ne dođeš preko leta u Pariz, kaže, možeš i da radiš, da nešto nađeš, neki posao. I tako sam ja odmah to leto, kada sam imao tri meseca bez škole, ja sam onda odlučio da krenem u Pariz autobusom, 24 sata sam se vozio autobusom, i onda Aleksandar mi je dao smeštaj u njegovom stanu, i ja prve dve sedmice nisam našao posao, tražio sam negde da nešto farbam i tako nisam našao, ali ono što je bilo dobro u te dve sedmice, Aleksandar mi je pokazao ceo Pariz. Možda ne baš ceo, ali ja sam onda video i Eiffelovu kulu i, kako se zove ono, Šanzeližev, da, ulica, pa Sucker Care, pa sva ta imena i danas se sećam. Probao sam najbolji sladoled u Parizu, Hagendas, ono mesto. I bilo je lepo te dve sedmice, onda kad sam počeo da radim, nije više bilo vremena za obilaske. I tako da smo proveli jedno dva i po meseca zajedno i tu smo lepo i proučavali Bibliju i družili se. I evo ja njemu kažem sada kad smo se sreli da nam je neko rekao pre koliko je to godina da ćemo jednog dana biti ovde u Torontu, ti ćeš biti gost iz Vašingtona, a ja ću biti pastor u crkvi u Torontu, da li bi to bilo moguće? A vidite kako Bog čudno vodi naše puteve. Što se tiče samog Aleksandra, on je završio teološki fakultet u Beogradu, naš fakultet, nakon toga magistarske studije na Endrusu, kasnije završava doktorat iz filozofije, u Beogradu, inače drugi doktorat je sistematske teologije i ovaj sad treći doktorat je u toku iz, to je visoko obrazovanje, higher education, ovaj treći doktorat. Bio je prodekar na teološkom fakultetu u Beogradu, ja mislim negde osam godina, 
prodekan, e sa što se tiče njegove službe, pastor 15 godina i kao profesor 25 godina. Ja sam ga onda pitao da li je to 40 godina zajedno, onda kaže nije, to je paralelno bilo i profesor i pastor. Njegova supruga Dragoslava Santrača, to smo joj sad puno puta pominjali u crkvi, ona je pisac ove biblijske povuke. I ona je, kada govorimo o adventizmu, među najboljim stručnjacima kada govorimo o psalmima. To je supruga, nama je žao što ona nije mogla biti sa nama, ali eto, možda drugom prilikom. I Dragoslava i Aleksandar imaju dve čerke, 21 godina i 17 godina. Aleksandar, pored toga što voli teologiju i filozofiju i da predaje, voli košarku i voli tenis. A sad nismo imali vremena, evo ovo kratko vreme, da nešto, ali otišli smo na plivanje zajedno, a nismo našli nešto što se tiče tenisa. I basketa voli etiku, voli filozofiju. Sinoć koji ste bili, imali smo jedno predavanje, vrlo interesantno, novi način gledanje vere i zakona, verujem da će to biti tako i danas. Aleksandre, hvala ti što si sa nama. Neka te Bog vodi i blagoslovi u današnjem razmišljanju. Imat ćemo prevod sa propovedovnice. Dobro, jel se čujemo na mikrofon? Can you hear me well? Jel ovo funkcioniše? It works well. Dobro, ja sebe nešto slabo čujem. I don't hear myself very well, so I hope you do. Mora prvo da se set up tabla. Kakav je to profesor bez tabli? What kind of teacher would it be without a board? Hvala Zorane na ovom uvodu. Thank you Zoran for this introduction. Mogu samo da kažem da je Zoran dugogodišnji prijatelj koji nikad ne iskorišćava prijateljstvo. I can say that Zoran is a long time friend who never takes advantage of this friendship. Jer kad priča da je bio kod mene, onda neki mogu da pomisle, eto, ne, on je čovek kojemu je bilo u tom trenutku potrebno nešto. He was a man who needed help at that time, but he never takes advantage of his friends. A postoje će trenuci kad meni nešto treba od njega. And there will be times when I will need something from him. I tako to ide u prijateljstvu, zar ne? And that's how it works in friendship, is it not? Mada Aristotel kaže da postoje tri vrste prijateljstva. Although Aristotel says that there are three kinds of friendships. Postoje ovi iz interesa, kad nekom nešto treba. Friendship out of interest, because you need something. Postoje ono zabava, idemo, pijemo, družimo se. The social friendships, we just go to have a good time together. Ali najbolji je model autentičnog prijateljstva, kad ti ne treba ništa od te osobe, ni druženje, ni korist, nego samo zbog te osobe si s tom osobom. But the best model of friendship is when you don't need anything from the person. You don't need any help, you don't need to socialize with them, but you just want to be with that person because of who they are. That's the best type of friendship. E, ja vam želim tako prijateljstvo, a verujte mi, vrlo je redko. That's the kind of friendship that I wish to all of you, and believe me, it is, it is quite rare. Da. Uh, isto želim da pohvalim ovu crkvu. I want to also commend this church. Jer vi imate renome, a i u realnosti vidim, kao jedna od najjačih crkva u dijaspori. You have a very good reputation in the Yugoslavian diaspora as one of the best churches. Ja verujem da je i vaš pastor novi tome doprinu, ali i starešini, i svi vi. And I'm sure that your new pastor has contributed to this, but obviously also the elders and all of you. Ali tu vas ohrabrujem da živite na standardu vašeg renomea. And I encourage you to indeed live at the level of your reputation. Da to malo ne ide na dole, nego da ostane tu gde je treba. Don't let it go down. Keep it at that high level. Dobro. Je li ima ovde među nama neko koje je iz Bosne, prorekno? Sigurno ima. Anybody from Bosna here? Čuj pitanja, da. What kind of question is that? Pre nego što krenem u proučavanje Bože reči, u ovo ozbiljno vreme u kom živimo, hteo sam da podelim sa vama jednu šalu. Before we move into the study of the word, in this very serious time, I wanted to share with you a joke. Znate onu šalu o kanadjaninu i bosancu, ne znate? Do you know the joke about the Canadian, the Bosnian man? Niste nikad čuli. You've never heard it? Dobro. Razgovaraju i kanadjanin i bosanac. So a Bosnian and a Canadian talk. I bosanac ga pita, koliko ti bre zarađuješ? And the Bosnian man says, how much do you make? Kanadjanin kaže, pet hiljada mesečno. And the Canadian says, five thousand a month. 
A koliko potrošiš, kaže? And how much do you spend? Tako, ko 3000. Uh, about 3000. Onda boss Sanas pita, pa šta radiš sa ostatkom 2000? And so the boss man asks, well, what are you doing with the rest, with the 2000 remaining? Kanadzijanin kaže, e, to se kod nas ne pita. And the Canadian says, well, that you don't ask uh, when you're a Canadian. A izvini, da pitam ja tebe, koliko ti zarađuješ? But let me ask you, how much do you make? Kaže, 200 evra mesečno, boss Sanas. And the boss man says, well, about 200 euros a month. A koliko trošiš? And how much do you spend? Oko 600 evra mesečno. About 600 euros a month. Pa kako, gde nađeš ostatak? So, but how do you do that? Where do you find that extra money? E, to se kod nas ne pita, kaže. Well, that, that you don't ask among our people. <laughs> Nije lako živjeti na Balkanu. <laughs> It's not ja easy to live among da pokažem i nešto ozbiljno. <laughs> A to je da nije lako živjeti na Balkanu. So I wanted to share that it's not easy to live in the Balkan world. I da možda ovde Kanadjani koji ste sad većina malo i stavite ruku u džep i tom Bosancu malo i pomognete tamo. And, and I want to encourage all of you who live here da ne bi morao da vam odgovara na ovaj način. <laughs> to, to dig deep into your pockets and maybe help those Bosnian guys so that they don't have to, to be answering awkwardly. <laughs> Ako je neko zainteresovan za taj metod promene života Bosanca, nek mi se javi posle. If any of you want to help Bosnians change their life in this way, feel free to reach out Pošto to me afterwards. Pošto osim šala ima i realnosti gde deca na Balkanu bukvalno gladuju. Because besides the, the jokes, the, it is a really difficult situation and we A have kako kids. roditelji nalaze novac, to samo Bog zna. We have kids in the, in the, on the Balkans who are, who are hungry, who go hungry and, and it's, God only knows how these parents are managing to, to keep them Najveća alive. Najveća kriza, na primjer, u Gazi će doći tek posle rata. Uh, in Gaza, the worst crisis will come after the war. Mir onima što su poginuli, nažalost, genocid otvoreni. Peace to, to those uh, who have died, unfortunately. Ali koji ostanu, neće biti ni malo dobro. But for those who remain, it will be very difficult. I ta pomoć treba tek posle. I tako si na Balkanu pokazalo. Tek nakon svih ratova, kad je ekonomija krenula na dole, ljudi su bukvalno počeli da gladuju i da traže hranu u kontejnerima smeće. Uh, the people in Gaza will, will find out after the war how difficult it is and this is indeed what happened in the Balkans as well. It's only when the war ended that people were really struggling to, to find food. They, they were looking through dumpsters and, and wherever they could find. It was a very challenging time. Tako su hrabrim da budemo uh, osetljivi po tom pitanju. And so I encourage you to be very sensitive on, on this topic. Naročito kad je najveći problem, e, da li mi je pun rezervuar goreva ili nije? Uh, especially when we live in a world where the, the problems we have is, is my gas tank full or not? If that's the biggest problem you have in your life, then thank God for it. Just to summarize quickly what we covered yesterday, last night. God knows that all of us are just sinners. I to zbog one zlokobne koalicije između tri elementa, zakon, telo i greh. Because of the, the evil coalition between the law, the body and sin. Zakon nešto jako dobro i jako sveto. The law is very good, it is holy, very holy. Ali koristi telo, naše slabo telo, but it uses our weak body da donese greh i smrt. To bring death uh, because of sin. Zato u Pavlovoj teologiji kaže zakon ubija. And this is why Paul in his theology says the law kills. Čak ima jedan stih koji kaže zakon promoviše greh. There, there's even a verse that says that uh, the law promotes sin. Ako je zakon dobar i svet, if, if the law is good and holy, promoviše greh i ubija nas, onda nešto tu nešto ima. And yet it promotes sin and brings death, there's a disconnect here, something's wrong. To je nasledje greha koje je u telu čoveka. That's the, um, the inheritance of the, the sin that, that lives within our ne dozvoljava us, zakonu da ispuni ulogu, odnosno mi ne možemo da ispunimo taj sveti zakon. And that sin is actually what prevents the law from actually being accomplished. We cannot fulfill e, the law. ćemo se vratiti ponovo na tu temu malo, ali ajde da pomalo analiziramo šta je danas. Danas je Bog zna da nisi samo grešnik. So we'll come back to this theme, but today we want to, to look at it from a different perspective. And that is that God knows that you are not only a sinner, not just a sinner. Na latinskom je simul justus, justus et peccator. In Latin you say simul justus et peccator. The same time, just and sinful. U isto vreme i pravedan i grešan. So, at the same time, how can we be both 
sinners and righteous. How can we be? Nije potential. To je Luterova izjava koja govori u realnosti ovo. Ne, ne potentially, nego u realnosti smo u isto vreme i pravednici i grešnici. This is what Luther uh, touches on when he says not that we can potentially be both of these, that we are in reality both sinners and righteous. Sad, ako uđete u subjektivnu psihologiju, malo o sebi razmišljate, ja u isto vreme i pravednih i grešnih, šta to znači? So when, when you look at this from a subjective uh, psychology perspective, what does that mean that I can be both a sinner and a righteous at to the same znači time? To znači da su psalmi i očajanja i psalmi radosti u isto vreme aktuelni. That means that a psalm can be both a psalm of lament and praise at the same time. A to očajanje zbog greha. Mi smo u isto vreme i grešnici i pravednici. And this lamentation is because of sin. We are both sinners and righteous. I tako je veza između ove dve teme. Bog zna da si samo grešnik. And that's the connection between these two themes. God knows that you are just a sinner. Ali i da nisi samo grešnik. And yet that you are not just a sinner. Da ima u tebi pravde. That there is righteousness in you. Ali nije od tebe. But it is not from Nego kao što smo sinoc rekli, verom u zajednici s Hristom. But as we said last night, it is through faith that this connection with Christ. I primanje duha Božje koji onda ispunjava pravdu zakona. And receiving the, the, uh, the spirit of God that fulfills the, the law. Dakle, ako imaš veru, imaš duha. So if you have faith, you have the spirit. Ti si pravednik. You are righteous. I tu pravdu ne može niko oduzeti, oduzeti od tebe. And that righteousness nobody can take away from you. Ali u isto vreme svako jutro i svakog dana kad se suočiš sa sobom znaš da si grešnik. And yet every morning when you have to face yourself, you realize that you are a sinner. I nije to ni toliko problematično da traje do naše smrti. And that is not even so problematic that it lasts until our death. Ako sačuvamo veru i duha Božeg u nama. If we keep the faith and the spirit of God in us. Danas treba da govorimo o dve najvažnije teme u hrišćanskoj teologiji apostola Pavla. Today we have to talk about the two theological pillars, the most important items in Paul's theology. Prva je u Rimljanima trećoj glavi 21 do 26. The first one is in Romans 3 verses 21 to 26. I pošto je sad bogoslužbeno vreme, nećemo kao studente sinoć pitati ko će da čita, ja ću čitati, ali moramo napraviti poseban naglasak. So since we are at worship, uh, I will read. I won't ask you like last night as students who wants to read. Uh, I will read and I will emphasize the, the important items. I taj naglasak je u trećoj glavi na specifičan način gdje on objašnjava da su svi ljudi bez razlike apsolutni grešnici. And, and that emphasis is what Paul makes here in, in uh, chapter 3 when he says that without exception all people are sinners. Ali postoji ono da nisi grešnik. Naglasak sad na pravednosti. But there is also that uh, perspective that you are not just a sinner. 20 i 21. stih, jer se delima zakona nijedno telo neće opravdati pred Bogom. Kroz zakon dolazi poznanje greha, ali ne samo poznanje intelektualnog poznanja, ono kome smo sinoć govorili, u svom telu, vidim tu silu, So uh, what we see here in verse 21 is that we have knowledge of, uh, of uh, the sin. Uh, it is something that we, we face, but it is not. Dobro, nije to toliko ni važno. Posle ćemo biti to. We'll come back to it. Da. Uh, on uh, skoro da simultano će prevoditi ako ja pričam brzo. A vidite kako ja svesno sebe sad učim da usporim. Ste see, primetili u odnosu na sinać. I have to teach myself to intentionally slow down otherwise it's going to be a simultaneous translation. Zato što 3000 puta objasnite nešto studentima, jel? Because when you say something to students 3000 times, i onda neko uz iz zadnjeg reda digne ruku profesor, šta mi ono treba da radimo? And then somebody from the back row raises his hand and says, "Teacher, what are we supposed to do?" Onda su profesori ti koji znaju da kontrolišu te frustracije. And professors very quickly learn to to deal with these frustrations. E tako vi me opomenite da pričam sporije. A sad se bez zakona javila pravda Božja posvedočena od zakona i od proroka. But now apart from the law the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. Bez zakona without sin uh, without law pravda righteousness. To su dva ključna termina ovde. Those are two key uh, pieces here. I u tom tekstu 3:21 26 vratit ćemo se na ovaj slajd posle. Ovo je struktura u engleskom. Text, uh, Ako imate uh, englesku Bibliju, ovo je struktura. 
In this text, the Romans 3:21 to 26, this is the structure that you see here. Kad pogledate 21. stih, but now apart from the law, piše gore, jel? Ti možeš uh, pročitati ostatak tog stiha. Um, Apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. Dakle, imamo dva važna principa, zakon i pravda Božja. So we have two important principles, the law and, and God's righteousness. Ali ja sam mislio da su oni toliko povezani da je pravda ispunjenje zakona. And I thought that these are so tightly linked that uh, righteousness is the fulfillment of the law. A on law. kaže da je pravda ostvarena bez zakona. But actually Paul says that the law is fulfilled without the righteousness, the fulfilled, righteousness without the is fulfilled without the law. Kako je to moguće? How is that possible? Sećate se juče da sam rekao da je Pavlova teologija autobiografska. You remember that yesterday I Ako said se that Paul's theology is, is really an autobiography. To znači da ono što je on doživio je promijenilo njegovu teologiju. What he experienced actually uh, changed his theology. On je bio u zakonu, u toj pravdi zakona. He was in the law, he was in righteousness through the law. Tako bio u pravdi zakona da je progonio bio drugi zbog toga. He was so deep into the law that he actually persecuted people. Zašto? Why? Zato što ti sektaši da ih nazovemo ondašnjeg vremena. Because njih, those sectarians, let's call them of, the, of those days, nisu mogli biti na pravom putu. They could not be on the right path. Jer oni tvrde da je Mesija došao bez uslova ispunjenja zakona od strane Božjeg naroda. Because they said that the Messiah came without the fulfillment of the law on God's people. To ne može jer jevrejsko učenje je bilo Mesija stiže kad mi budemo savršeni, kad narod ispuni savršeno zakon. And that's not possible because Jews believe that the Messiah would come after people have fulfilled the law. Zato svi ti njihovi reformatori što su bili pre Isusa su u suštini bili jako i nasilni jer su hteli etnički da odvoje jevrejski narod da se oslobode gospodara da mogu tako zakon sačuvati mirno, savršen, savršeno ga sačuvati. And this is why all the reformers who came before Jesus were so violent because they wanted to cleanse the people of, of God so that they could achieve this righteousness in order for the Messiah to be able to come. Zvuči poznato iz vesti možda danas? Does that sound familiar from the news today? Šta je poenta otklanjanja drugih? What's the point of cleansing of pushing those other people? Ako nije away? religijski naglasak na zakonu, na hramu, if it's not a, a, a religious emphasis on the law, on the temple, i to je još uvek popularno u nekoj novoj formi, u nekoj globalnoj i strašno novoj formi, ali još uvek je popularno to učenje. And we see that this, this teaching is still popular in a global form. It's in a different form, but it is very much the same teaching. A Pavle kad je susreo vaskrslo Hrista na putu za Damaska, mu se svetlo javilo. And when Paul met Jesus on the path on the road to Damascus. On je bio tri dana slep. He was blind for three days. I za ta tri dana razmišljao da li je moguće da je Mesija došao bez zakona. He was thinking for three days, is it possible that the Messiah came without the law being fulfilled? Da li je moguće da Isus iz Nazareta Mesija iako nismo ispunili zakon kao Izrael? Is it possible that Jesus is the Messiah since we have not yet fulfilled the law? Pogodite komu je pomogao da razume te stvari. Guess who helped him understand these things? Kad si slep, ko ti pomože? When you're blind, who's helping you? Duh je bio toliko ga ispunio. He was so filled by the Spirit. On nije video, dakle nije bio distracted, nije mogao da bude opterećen drugim stvarima. He was not distracted. He was not burdened by what his eyes were seeing. I tri dana i tri noći samo o tome razmišljao. And for three days and three nights that's all he thought about. Zamislite taj stres kad ste videli a sad ne možete da vidite. Slepilo. Imagine the stress that you could see fine and all of a sudden you can't see anything anymore. A u isto vreme dobio mir. And yet at the same time he had peace now. Zato što je duh s njim objašnjava mu ovu stvar. Bez zakona pravda Hristova. To je tamo u centru. Pogledajte. 24. Because, stih. Because the Spirit was explaining these things to him, how to achieve righteousness without the fulfillment of the law. Opravda će se zabadava blagodaću otkupom Hrista. All are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Kojega je Bog postavio da bude očišćenje verom u krvi njegovoj? God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood. Da pokaže svoju pravdu oproštenjem predjašnjih greha to be received by faith. Nešto o pravdi ovdje malo. Something about um, uh, righteousness. Nije ovo zakonski termin, ovo je duhovni spasonosni termin. Pravda spasava. This is not a legal terminology, this is a spiritual terminology. Obično pravda uključuje uh, kaznu, naravno, Mesija je kažnjen, ali mi smo oslobođeni kazne, dakle tu je spasonosni element. Righteousness usually carries with it uh, a, um, a sentence 
uh, that, that normally we should en, en, endure, but I, not in this case. I nigde na sudu danas ne možete nevinog člana familije da pitate sudija, ali bi ti hteo 40 godina da služiš umestu tvojeg kriminalca u familiji, tvojeg tvo rođenog? Uh, when you have a lawsuit today, you cannot ask the judge, judge, are you prepared to serve that sentence of 40 years instead of this person who is guilty? Da, judge ili bilo ko ko je innocent u, u, u court. A judge or anybody else, an innocent person who is just Zato attending. Zato je Božja pravda malo drugačija od ljudske pravde. And this is why God's righteousness is different mi, than human righteousness. Mi kroz večnost nećemo razumeti kako je nevini i to sa božanskom prirodom uspeo da ispuni pravdu tako što je žrtvon za krivog. Throughout um, um, eternity we will not be able to understand how is it possible that an innocent person could justify through their sacrifice somebody who was guilty. Samo recite gde je tu pravda? Where's the justice in this? Tu nema pravde. There's no justice. Sa ljudske tačke gledaš. From a human perspective. Ali božanska pravda je božanska pravednost. Imamo i mi razliku pravda i pravednost. U engleskom ima šta? Justice i righteousness. Tako. But God's justice enables righteousness through the shedding of innocent blood. Tako je. Dakle Božja pravda je pravednost, righteousness. So God's justice is righteousness. I ta pravda se obistinila na jedan vrlo specifičan način u odnosu na stari zavet. And, and this righteousness manifested itself in a very unusual way. Uh, ovde nisam uspeo danas da stavim taj slajd, ali hteo sam da stavim pa sam zaboravio, da. I forgot uh, slide. U uh, starom zavetu imate kovčeg zaveta. Sećate se. In the Old Testament you have the Ark of the Covenant, you remember? Ovde kaže da je Bog stavio Hrista da bude očišćenje. Here it says that God uh, put Christ to be the cleansing. To je jako daleko od originalnog značenja. Jako that, daleko. That's very far from the original meaning. Originalno značenje da je Bog postavio Hrista da bude poklopac na tom kovčegu. In the original meaning, uh, God uh, used Christ to become the cover on that ark of the covenant. E, taj se cover zove Hilasterion na grčkom. That cover is called Hilasterion in Greek. Koji je služio kao pomirilište između Boga i čoveka. Who was serving to actually um, pomiri... Pomiriš, pomirilište, uh, mesto mira. Uh, kako prevedeš? Uh, atonement. Atonement, thank atonement, you. Da. Uh, that cover was supposed to be the atonement between God's people and God. E, i kada je Hristos umro na krstu, gde je sada atom, gde je taj cover, gde je taj poklopac? And when Christ died on the cross, where is now this cover? To je krst. It's the cross. I ono što je jako važno jeste da postoje tradicionalne crkve, neke koje obožavaju krst kao krst. What's very important, there are churches that, uh, that worship the cross itself. Ovde je poziv da se obožava žrtva na krstu, ne sam objekat. We are called to worship the sacrifice, not the cross, but the sacrifice of the cross. I to je bilo najviše korišteno u prvih nekoliko vekova hrišćanstva da ismeju hrišćane. And, and that image was actually used to mock Christians in the first century. Obožavati nekog ko je umro na krstu bilo je ludilo u tim vekovima, našto u prvom veku. It was insanity to be worshiping somebody who was crucified who died on the cross. Nema ništa tu duhovno za ljude, ništa privlačno, nije bilo. There is nothing spiritual or attractive in, in this picture. Ali ko je čitao malo Septuagintu i Stari Zavet, Septuaginta je prevod grčki sa jevrijskog Starog Zaveta. But for those who read the Septuagint, the translation in Greek of the Old Testament. Oni su lupili uh, rukom o, o glavu, što se kaže, i rekli, Bog je njega učinio da bude Hilasterion. They hit their forehead and said, God made Christ to become the Hilasterion. Pa dakle, ona, onaj prvi proces je završen. Evo novog, novog zaveta. So the first part of the process is finished. This is now a new part. I taj part, taj, taj novi deo je verom u Hristu blagodat kroz pravdu, bez zakona, bez uslova zakona. Do, ovde treba jedan bracket staviti, staviti bez uslova ispunjenja zakona. So this new part now is believing in Christ's righteousness without the fulfillment of the law as a prerequisite. Šta to znači? What does that mean? Kad sam jednom kao pastor učestvovao u obraćenju uh, jedne osobe, when I participated to the conversion of a person as a pastor, i ta osoba je dolazila stalno s Biblijom od crkve, smo stalno proučavali, imala je svoju Bibliju. This person would always bring the, the Bible to church because we were always studying together. I uvek je nosila Bibliju nekako bliže srcu kao. And this person was always carrying their Bible very close to their heart. Rekli biste zaista osoba zna obraćena i tako dalje. You would say that this is a truly converted person. Iako biste pitali osobu da li se sprema za krštenje sad nakon svih lekcija, 
nakon svega onoga što sad radim sa studentima pet puta ponavljanja i tako dalje. And if you were to ask that person if they're ready for baptism after all the studying that we have done together really really looking deeply into some of these topics. I osoba kaže da. And the person said yes. Svinjetina out. Subotu super sam počeo da svetkam. I'm uh, worshiping on the Sabbath. Kafa, ništa. No coffee. Duvan, ništa. No smoking. Zamisli, pastore. Imagine that, pastor. I to je uslov za krštenje, ja ga pitam. A, and you think that that's the condition for uh, baptism. A on jadan kaže. And he sadly says. Jadan. Jadno. Jadan, jadan kaže. Yeah. Pa šta drugo? Well, and he says, what else? Šta drugo? What else? A ja još jadniji i ne znam šta da mu odgovorim. And, and I feel even sadder and I don't know what to answer him. Ja mu kažem, o, o, mi smo spremni za ulazom u bazen, a nismo. Now, what do we say now? Problem. We thought we were ready for the baptism, but we're not. To je to uslov uspunjavanja zakona. I crkva će neka staviti amin na to, reći, dobro, uklopio se, može. That's this condition of fulfillment Ništa se tu niko nije uklopio. And the, to je daleko od uklapanja. And the, sometimes churches will say, well, it's okay, it'll come together at da. some point, but no, we're, we're very far from you know, this coming Ali together. Ali to je ta forma, ta ograda koju mi volimo da podignemo. But that's the, this, this form, this, hence, uh, this fence that we like to put around. I onda smo drugačiji. And now we're different. E, kad smo drugačiji, sigurno smo Boži. And Fakt. therefore, if we're different, we must be godly. Ko kaže da ako si drugačiji, si sigurno Boži? Who says that just because you're different that you are godly? Boži si kad si Hristov, a ne kad si drugačiji. When you are of Christ, then you are God. E, a Pavlova teologija kaže, svima sam sve bio da kako god svakog spasim. And Paul says, I was everything to everybody just so I could save everybody. I ako tvoj prijatelj koji nije deo crkve, koji je van crkve, kaže, dođi kod mene na večeru. And if your friend who is not in the church says, come over for dinner. I tamo stoji pola čaše vina i svinski steak, ovaj šnicla. And, and if there is half a glass of wine and uh, some uh, uh, pig uh, meat there. I ti tamo pomisliš, e, kad bi ovaj čovjek postao Hristov. And I thought, ah, if only this man could become Christ's. A on kaže, ako ne pojedeš, ne popiš, nisi mi prijatelj. And he says to me, if you don't eat and drink with me, you're not my friend. Pastore, pre podne subote, nemoj ta teška pitanja. <laughs> Pastor, don't raise those difficult nemoj, questions tu smo došli da, morning. Tu, nismo došli da baš toliko duboko razmišljamo. <laughs> We haven't come to dig that deep quite. Etičko, teološko pitanje, duhovno pitanje, strašna pitanja, so, realna. Ethical, spiritual question, but very real question. Very ja imam difficult. drugove koji nisu adventisti, igramo taj basket, dokle ćemo, vidjet ćemo. Ima i 60 plus igraju s nama, i 50, i 40. I have friends who are not Adventists and we play basketball together. It goes into their 40s, I, 50s, and 60s. Pivo posle. And afterwards, they all go to drink a beer. I ja idem s njima. And I go with them. I pijem svoj ginger ale. Znaš, ok, samo ginger ale. And Svaki. I drink a ginger ale, Zoran knows. I ovi kažu, uh, ti ljudi što igraju sa mnom uh, baske, kažu, daj, daj, Aleksu, taj pitcher of ginger ale već jednom. Već znaju šta, šta ja pijem. And, and those friends, they already know. So they say, yeah, get, get Alex that pitcher of ginger ale. Ali šta bi se desilo? But what would happen? Ako bi Alex jednog dana srknuo malo piva. If Alex one day said, ah, I can have a beer. I vi ste bili svedoci svemu tome. And you witnessed all of this. Kako biste se osjećali? What would you think? Etičko, duhovno, Ethically, kontekstualno pitanje. And contextually. To se nikad neće desiti, ali se ja nekad mislim šta bi bilo kad bi se desilo. I wonder Ko- what would happen if, if that was Koliko je ta ograda forme zakona jaka? To, to, je, to je pitanje. How strong is that fence? that form based on the law koja je, bi, koja je bitna za zdravlje za duhovnost za večer život ne kažem da to nije sve važno this fence is, is important it has value for ali pitanje health. da li je najvažnije to je pitanje but the question is is that the most important item naravno idemo dalje druga korinćanima kad je reč o svetu druga korinćanima 5 18 do 20 isto iz paulove teologije malo jedna poslanica koja je malo problematična let's look at the second corinthians uh, uh, chapter 5 Verses 18 to 20. Zovu je problematična, a koriste je za pomirenja u crkvi. Druga Korinćanima je super tekst da čitate kad su svađe u crkvi i kad su problemi. This is a problematic text and, and it's a great text to read when there's a strife in the church, when there's problems. Zato što on ovdje govori o miru, o pomirenju. Ali Because sve this... od Boga i koji pomeri nas sa sobom kroz Hrista i dade nam službu pomirenja, jer Bog beše u Hristu i svet pomeri sa sobom, ne primivši im greha njihovih, metnuvši u nas reč pomirenja. 
all of this, uh, uh, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Da. That God was reconciling the, word, the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Crkva je religijski svet, religijski svet, šta god je tu drugi. So we see here the religious Druga, world, drugi the krug i treći svet, svet uopšte. And the world at large. Za koga je Hristus umro ovde i s kim se Bog pomirio? S crkvom, izabranima? For whom did uh, Christ die and sa, with whom did he sa relativno religijskim ljudima koji poznaju ko je Bog ili za ceo svet? So he was reconciled with the church, with the za ceo svet. The religious world or the whole world? Jeste sigurni? Whole world? E, ako je to tako, ako je pomirenje između Boga i celog sveta, if this reconciliation is between God and the whole world, onda je Bog sebe pomirio već sa svim katolicima, then God has already been reconciled with all the Catholics. Uzu sam tu grupu zato što nam je to najomiljenije u adventizmu. I've picked that group because they're the, the preferred ones in e, adventism. Da li je Bog umro za sve te ljude? Pitam se. Did Christ die for all these people? To znači da je on već pomirio sebe sa svima. That means that he has already been reconciled with all. A ko sam ja onda da ih mrzim? Kad se Bog već pomirio sa svima. So who am I to hate them if God is already reconciled with them? A za, zašto se već pomirio? Pa zato što je umro na krstu pre nego što su oni tražili spasenje. So how is he already reconciled? Because Christ already died on ko ste the cross. vi bili pre nego što su upoznali Hrista? Isto, isto, svi mi ovde. Just like all of us, uh, Christ already died before we were dakle, reconciled. Dakle, to da Christ. Pavle uči da je Bog sebe pomirio sa celim svetom, to je dalo silu njegove misiji. So the fact that Paul was teaching that Christ was reconciled to the entire world is what gave power to his mission work. I u Atini, i u Rimu, on svima priča, kaže, Bog se već sa vama pomirio, samo da ga upoznate, samo da vidite kolika je to ljubav, to je sve. In Athens, in Rome, Paul is preaching God has already been reconciled to you guys because Christ has died on the cross. Na kraju imate pobedu nad silama zla i super pobeda zbog ljubavi. Šta je krst? Opravdanje, pomirenje i super pobeda nad silama zla. So what is the cross? The cross is victory over sin. Koliko od vas je iskusilo silu sila zla u životu? How many of you have experienced the power of sin? Na vašoj sopstvenoj koži. On your own skin. Koliko onda više cenimo ovaj treći razlog? So how much do we uh, cherish this third reason? Kad se okreneš ka krstu, kad when, pogledaš na Golgotu, when you look at the cross at Golgotha, pi sve sile zla odjednom prestanu biti sile. All these powers of sin lose their power. Zar je to pobjeda nad Sotonom, ta smrt tog čovjeka? Kako je Bog to uradio? How, how did Christ achieve this victory over Satan? Zato što je jednostavno pokazao neshvatljivu ljubav za ceo kosmos, za ceo univerzum. Because he showed this love that's incomprehensible for all the universe. E, zato se koristi grčka reč super pobjeda, a ne pobjeda. And that's why in, in the Greek it's, it's actually called a super victory, not just a victory. Super victory. Zašto? Zato why? što sada kroz stradanje, kroz iskustva, kroz probleme Pavle kaže mi smo super pobednici opet. Ništa ne može da pobedi Krista na krstu, odnosno veru u Hrist. Because despite the tribulations, the problems, da. Paul says we have this hyper victory that cannot be taken away. I frustracije sila zla koja hoće da vas unište, a posle izađete iz krize vi još jači. And, and these powers of sin of evil are frustrated, but when you come out through them, you're even stronger. I onda oni moraju još jače iskušenja da smišljaju. And so they have to Preveliki think ste problem njima. They have to think up even even greater temptations. You've become such a big problem da, da, for them. Da bi vas đavo uništio, on mora da smišlja nove planove. Čudne planove smišlja i nove, ali kad se vratiš krstu dobiješ tu silu koja je nad svim silama, jer je Hristos super pobednik. Satan has to keep thinking, you know, more and more powerful temptations, but every time you come back to the cross, you are strengthened even more. Evanđelje po apostolu Pavlu, ne po Luci, ne po Jovanu ovdje. That's according to Paul, it's not Luke's or, or, or John's uh, gospel. Sve to Biblija, ali ovdje ima specifičan naglasak. This is a special emphasis that Paul has. Šta on veruje o vaskrsenju? What does Paul believe about uh, resurrection? Prvo ono što moram da kažem jako važno. The first thing that I have to say that's very important. A to nas neće ni malo iznenaditi, ali možda je podložno malo debati. It, it probably won't surprise you, but it's important to emphasize. Da li je hrišćanstvo ideja? Is Christianity an idea? 
Ili je to vezano za realnost? Or is it tied to reality? Ako odete u platonizam i dođete na moj predmet istorije filozofije, učimo Platona, on kaže pa to je isto. If you go to Plato, he'll say it's the same. Ideja je realnost, realnost je ideja ili Hegela filozofa. To je za njih isto. Ali u principu, u normalnom procesu razmišljanja, mi imamo ideju o sebi, ideju o Bogu, ideju o svetu, a postoji i realnost Boga, realnost mene i realnost sveta. We have an idea about ourselves, about the world, about God. I o tome smo na pouci govorili što se novo dotako psihologije malo. But there's also reality about all of these and Novo talked about this during our lesson. Da li je Isus vaskrso iz mrtvih u našoj glavi samo? Did Christ resurrect from the dead only in our mind? Ili on vaskrso u realnosti? Or did he resurrect in reality? Da li kad odete, bili ste u Getsemani, u Izraelu, ako ste bili, uđete u grobnicu, vidite stvarno prazan grob. If you go to Getsemani today in Israel, you will see a truly empty tomb. Velika verovatnoća da je tu bilo, možda nije 100%, ali to je... It's very likely that Christ was there, it may not be 100% certainty. Prvo pitanje koje se nameće nekom ko predaje filozofiju i teologiju i etiku je, wow, ovo nije samo ideja. The first thing that hits you, especially when you're teaching these topics, is, wow, this was not just an idea. Jer tamo neki što su posle učili demitologizaciju, Bultmann i tamo neki Nemci, jako pametni, ali malo čudni ljudi. Because some Germans, a little strange, but okay, I mean, who studied this? Učili su da se učenicima sve to zbilo u glavi. They taught that all of this was just in the head, in the mind of the disciples. Jedan veliki mit je osvojio ih je uzbudio ih je i taj mit da mi hoćemo da živimo, da budemo besmrtni, počeli odjednom da veruju da je Isus besmrtan. I oni da su besmrtni. E pa to može da traje do onog trenutka dok se vi sa Hristom ne susretnete u realnosti. That can go on until you meet and face Christ in reality. Jel shvatate da susret za Hristom u realnosti je opipljiv koliko i vaša ruka, koža, sada i realnost, ova tu što smo mi, naša realnost? Because that's when you realize that this meeting with Christ is as tangible as your skin, as you yourself are. Tako je. Ako nema tog susreta u realnosti, ideja ne može puno da pomogu. If that meeting doesn't happen in reality, that idea will stop short. E pa prva stvar koju on hoće da poveže sa starozavetnom teologijom je da je Isus ustao kao sin Boži. So the first thing that Paul wants to emphasize... Ajde da vidimo to u Rimljanima. Jako zanimljiv stih u Rimljanima, prvi stih, i jako sažeto verovanje. Let's look at Romans 1, where Christ arose as the Son of God. Jeste, u četvrtom stihu. Verse 4. Posvedočen silno za Sina Božeg Duhom Svetim po vaskrsenju iz mrtvih. And who through the Spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by His resurrection from the dead. Ko zna dobro biblijsku teologiju, kaže, stoj pa ja, pa Sin Boži je bio i pre vaskrsenju, zar ne? Well, somebody who knows theology will say, but wait, wasn't Christ the Son of God before resurrection? So how is the resurrection now testifying that he was the Son of God? That shows that we don't understand the importance of this fact of resurrection. We were always thinking, he's always been the Son of God. When did he become the Son of God? I ima nekoliko elemenata da možda po rođenju ili pre u večnosti, ali ovde kaže po vaskrsenju. We have some elements that say, well, from birth already he was the son of God, but here Paul says resurrection testifies to him being the son of God. Tako je, ili možemo da kažemo po vaskrsenju je postao specifičan profil Sina Božeg. We can say that upon resurrection he took on a specific profile as the son of God. Dobro, da malo požurimo s ovim stihovima. Prva Korinčanima 15, 21 imamo a otkrivenje novog čoveka, čoveka po novom Adamu, ili novog Adama, ili poslednjeg Adama. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 21, samo ti možeš pročitati. Verse 21, where Christ is made alike to the first Adam. And verse 21 says, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Iako je došlo smrt kroz čoveka, vaskrsenje isto dolazi kroz koga? Isto kroz čoveka. Dakle, taj drugi čovek je drugi Adam. Just like sin came through man, the resurrection also comes through man, Christ, as the second Adam, as we see in verse 22. Ako je on u vaskrsenju postao novi čovek, if he became a new man through resurrection, 
ako je postao nova funkcija sina Božega, if he became a new function of the son of God, pa onda je sve u njemu. Then everything is in him. Sve što je važno Bogu i čovjeku onda je u njemu. Everything that's important for man is in Christ. Omašiti taj centar svemira koji je Hristos i sin Boži i drugi Adam, to znači omanuti, omašuti celo hrišćanstvo, nema hrišćanstva. So missing this concept means missing the entire Christianity. There's no Christianity if we miss this piece. Osim toga, osim svega toga, u Filipijanima 2, besides all this in Philippians 2, 6 do 11, 6-11, kaže da je on Kyrios na, na grčkom. It says that he is Kyrios in Greek. A to Kyrios šta znači? What does that mean, Kyrios? Da li neko zna šta znači Kyrios ili Kurios? Zovemo ga titulom gospod. Znači, po vas kresenju iz mrtvih je postao gospod. I opet se pitamo, pa zar nije bio gospod pre? So, what this says is that upon resurrection he became the Lord. Zar je vas kresenje toliko važno da je Mesiju učinilo sinom Božim, drugim Adamom i gospodom? Wasn't he the Lord already even before resurrection? Here Paul says that in resurrection he became the son of God, the second Adam and the Lord. I šta je taj gospodar? To je gospodar, gospodar koji sve poseduje. And what is that Lord? It's it's a Lord who owns owns everything. To pokazuje da naš život u celosti je njegovo posjedovanje. On te poseduje. It means that our living our our very selves are his property he to, owns to, everything to, including ourselves pokazuje da smo otkupljeni da više sebi ne pripadamo mi potpuno pripadamo njemu to je to we have been redeemed we don't own ourselves anymore he owns us i onda kad ja postavim sebe pitanje koji ću posao raditi u koji ću grad ići so when i ask myself what am i what job am i going to do where am i going to live koliko ću imati tako dalje who are we marry how many kids jesu to važna pitanja za boga Are those important questions for God? Prvo je to važna pitanja za vas ako je reč o vašoj deci. Are those important questions for you? I te kako krucijalno važno, pa mi živimo za tu decu, za šta mi živimo? Nego da u novu generaciju utkamo taj duh. Tako i Bog, on živi za svoju decu, on hoće da nam pomogne, ali mi ga ne činimo gospodarem, mi ga činimo manjim gospodarem nego što jeste i tu je problem. As parents we live for our kids, we want to to transfer that knowledge of God to them. Ako je Bog gospodar ako je Bog gospodar, on je gospodar svega što si ti, sve što odlučuješ, sve što radiš, sve što imaš je njegovo. If God is Lord, then he is the Lord of everything, including yourself. Kažu neki moji studenti kad smo razgovarali o tome da li mogu večeras da idu na neku proslavu, bila je neka proslava ili neko predavanje, ne sjećam se tačno šta je bio, šta je bilo. Some students who are asking, can we go to this party? There was some party going on. Kaže, nemam auto, student. And one student says, I don't have a car. Ja kažem, imam ja, uzmi moj. So I say, well, I have a car, you can have mine. Ono, oni amerikanci čude, smo se čude. And the, these American students were surprised. Čemu ovaj govori? Ovo je komunista, njega treba izbaciti iz, iz zemlje. <laughs> What's this guy talking about? He's a communist. Ovo je pro-komunist. Nisam komunista, nego komunist. sve što je moje i tvoje, zato što je sve Božije, nije moje uopšte. But everything that's mine is yours, because it's all the Lord's Šta anyway. ti treba? Evo ti. What do you need? Here. Čak Isus kaže, šta ti treba, evo ti, ne traži nikad nazad, kaže Isus. When, when Jesus says, what do you need, here it is. Ako razbi he auto, for it back. Ako razbi auto, ko što je moja čerka nedavno izgrebala. Ovaj. And if, if they smash your car, my daughter scratched the car. Onda je to ok, zato što to nije tvoje. Ti nisi toliko uzbuđen kad nije tvoje. Ničim nisi okay, uzbuđen. Because it's not yours anyway, so what are you Život getting so emotional tvoj, about? Imetak nije tvoj, deca nisu tvoja. Ništa nije tvoje samo. Your life's not yours, your property is not yours, your kids are not yours, nothing is just yours. E, to je Kyrios, gospod Kyrios. To, to je vera u Kyrios. That's the Kyrios Lord. Osim Konsa. toga, osim toga, uh, ne znam koliko još malo vremena imamo, ali ovo je carska titula, Kyrios kao car, odnosno kao Cezar. And we also see Kyrios as ah. king, as Caesar. Novi Cezar, Rimska imperija, olala. A new Caesar, new Roman emperor. Uf. Znači, on rođen kao beba u štali u Vitlemu, za koji rimljani nikad nisu čuli za to mesto. So he was born in a stable, of, and the Romans never heard of that place. Odrast u Nazaretu, tako bili smo tamo malo mesto, ništa, jadi beda, malo, ništa. He grew up in this miserable little place called da. Nazareth. Da, možda je bio Seforis, možda je išao u Amfitatar, Isus u Seforis je bio veliki grad, malo gledaju yeah. gladijatore i konje, možda su išao, možda i nisu. Ali to, to je tako mali gradić. It's such a tiny t- a tiny place. Maybe Jesus went to a neighboring town to to see something bigger, but Nazareth is such a small place. I sad se hrišćani razmilili po Rimskoj imperiji i kaže naš Kirijos je novi Cezar. And now the Christians have spread out throughout the Roman Empire and they say Christ is our new Lord. 
I, I, I kad javite to administraciji vlastima, šta se dešava? And when you announce this to the authorities, what happens? Progonstvo, zato su prvi hrićeni bili proganjani. Persecution, and that's why the first question kažu ove posle Covida, menja se svet. What do they say after Covid? U kom COVID? smislu? Steže se obruč. New world sve order. Zašto se steže obruč? Zato što Cezar hoće da ima potpunu kontrolu. Conditions are tightening more and more. Why? Because Caesar wants full control. To vodi u globalni fašizam da će antihrist biti zamo to učenje. E sad, ako je to tako, mi izađemo i kažemo Hristus je jedini Cezar. And we find ourselves there and we say no, no, Christ is the only Caesar. I onda mi neko kaže hrišćanstvo nije politička poruka. And then somebody tells me Christianity is not a political movement. Pa nema niša više političko od toga. There is nothing more political than Christianity. Kad ja kažem nisi mi ti Cezar, Hristos je moj Cezar. When I say you're not my Caesar, Christ is my Caesar. Rezultat je bio drastičan, tako će biti i na kraju. I mi to znamo zašto. The results were quite drastic and that's how we'll be in the end and we know why. I na kraju malo neobično u prvoj korinćanima 15 Hristos je vaskrsao u telu, a kaže da je životodavni duh postao. And in 1 Corinthians 15 it says that Christ was erected in the flesh. Ali duh je šta postao? Postao je on životodavni duh, life-giving spirit. But he became life-giving spirit as well. E sad se postaje pitanje, da li je Hristos sada duh ili je telo? And now the question is, is Christ in spirit or in flesh? On je duhovno telo, on je telo. He is a spirit in the flesh. Ali je i duh. And obviously a spirit. I to božanski duh. And a godly spirit. Koji je svuda prisutan. To je paradoks Hristovog prisutstva. On je u telu svuda prisutan jer je duh. And that's the paradox of Jesus. He is everywhere because he is in the spirit. Znate ono učenje, on ne može da bude svuda, pa poslo zamenika Duha Svetog da bi mogo biti svuda. Znate to? You've heard that teaching that Christ cannot be everywhere now, so he is sending his spirit because he can no longer be omnipresent. To zvuči kao u trojstvu, ja ne mogu nešto da uraj, maj ti mi pomozi. It sounds like in the Trinity, they're kind of saying, well, I can't do this, can you help me out? To se čak ravna sa jeresi. And that's frankly almost heretic. Hristos u telu može da bude svuda. Christ in the flesh can be everywhere. Za razliku od nas, zato što je životodavni duh, on nije samo telo. Which is very different from us, and why? Because Christ is a spirit. Kad znamo šta je Pavle propovedao, Hristos umro, Hristos vaskrsu, Hristos proslaven kao Mesija. When you know what Paul preached, Christ in the flesh, Christ vaskrsut Hristos, resurrected, i tamo imate Lord, piše to je Kyrios, gospodar. Onda se postaje pitanje šta je sljedeća faza njihovog propovedanja bila. Dobro, izađem ja u javnost, mi izađemo i govorimo ovo o Hristu, raspetom Hristova. Šta je sljedeća faza? Primanje duha i stvaranje zajednice. Taj duh životodavni Hristos je hrišćanska crkva, zajednica hrišćanske crkve je zasnovana na tom duhu. Duh, novi duh. The Christian church is founded on this new spirit. A tvoj odgovor na to, response piše, je vera i obraćenje. And your answer to this is faith and conversion. Samo da vam kažem, prva, prva, ima tri sekcije tamo, ali tako? So there's three sections there. Prva sekcija je Pavlova teologija, ko je Hristos? To je jasno, to smo rekli. The first section is Paul's theology, who is Jesus Christ? Drugo šta su apostoli isto propovedali, isto važno, druga sekcija, da kad siđe duh, on stvara specifičnog zajednicu koja se zove Sveta crkva. Crkva. Ali još uvijek se traži naš odgovor. I na jednu realnost i na drugu. I na Hristovu realnost i na hrišćansku u crkvi. Zašto? Zato što je telo Hristovo na zemlji crkva. Ovo telo je isto i crkva. Because on earth The body of Christ is the church. I ti ne možeš da kažeš ja sam vezan za glavu, ali nisam za telo Hristovo. And so you can't say, well, I'm tied to the head, but I don't care for the body of Christ. Dakle, odluku koju ćeš doneti danas, na osnovu ovog što vam ja prezentujem ovde, And so this decision that you will make today, based on today's presentation, je vera u Hrista bez uslovna vera, is faith in Christ without condition, obraćenje, promjena tvog životnog usmerenja, conversion and the change in your life's direction. A to isto znači primanje novog duha i biti u zajednici tog novog duha. And that implies receiving a new spirit and being in this community of faith. Tako da na žalost ili na sreću, ne znam šta da mislim. And so whether it's whether you see this as good news or not, I'm not sure what to think here. Ovaj model se izgubio danas u crkvi. 
This model was lost in the church today. I mnoge crkve izgledaju ka, samo kao društveni šta? Klubovi za druženje, razmenjujemo recepte za sa origanom ili bez šta ono soja i šta li već tofu. And, and because of that many da. churches have become uh, social clubs where we exchange recipes I sve to dobro. tofu. To, to je okay, ja volim tofu. And, and that's good. I like tofu. I origano volim. To. To, to je sve dobro. This Ali to good. nije suština zašto smo mi tu i ko smo mi. Ni not, ko smo ni zašto, šta, u kom pravcu delujemo. But that's not the essence of who we are and why we are here. Jer Hristos na krstu, ako ti se nije otkrio, onda je stvarno vaskrsli Hristus besmislenost za ljude. Dakle, to ide je, u jedno. Hristus va, raspeti je i vaskrsli. Because if you haven't grasped uh, Jesus on the cross, then how will the resurrection fit in I kad ti se Hristus vaskrsli, otkrije, to je u ličnom iskustvu, ja se nemam vremena za moje iskustvo, uh, ne mogu da govorim uh, kao I, I studentima. I won't have time to share my experience, but that has been my experience be, seeing Christ revealed da kad on the cross. tu veru u Hrista, onda dolazi Duh Sveti u silini i stvara, vodite u zajednicu. Da budeš so, deo tela Hristova. So when you go through that phase of, of uh, building the faith in Jesus and then receiving the Holy Spirit. Ja lično verujem da Bog vodi ljude u različite zajednice. Neko ga vodi u adventističku, neko ga u neku drugu. A možda će onoj drugoj porasti dovoljno da dođe u adventističku. A možda nikad neće doći u adventističku. Dakle, ne možemo biti kao istorijski uh, ograničeni onim ogradama o kojima sam govorio. I believe that uh, God's Spirit leads some people to the Adventist Church, but some other people to a different da. church. And maybe in time they will come to the Adventist Church, but we cannot look at the historical Adventist Church as somehow the fenced off area that is the only uh, the divine place of, of godly people. Bilo bi jako arogantno. That would be very arrogant. Tvrditi da je Bog samo sa nama. To, to claim that God is with us only and zar, nobody else. Zar nije to glavna prepreka bila kod jevrijskog naroda? Hasn't that been the precise issue with the people the Jewish people? Mi, zar ćemo mi sad u realnosti, ne u ideji, nego u realnosti da promašimo tačno tamo gdje su oni promašili? Are we going to fail again exactly where they failed by building this barrier? Borimo se protiv toga. We need to fight this. A to znači biti s ljudima napolju. And that means being with the people Slušati, outside. Čuti, pomoći uh, voditi ih ka zajednici. Ja nisam pro, uh, imate Duha Svetog koji vodi njih ka zajednici, ali ste vi izašli napolje, centri fugalno, napolje. That means listening, helping, uh, bringing people to this community. To je vrlo kratki prevod ovo što sam rekao. Uh, ali, but, okay. but being outside je, among the super. people. Da, da. <laughs> ovaj, na kraju, naša odluka danas and in the end, our decision today Sećate se da smo na pouci proučavali čekaj na gospoda, tamo nema puno vere, ali kod Pavlove teologija je vera, 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 faith. Sve se svodi na veru. You remember that we studied in Psalms waiting on God, but with Paul it's faith, 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 everything is about faith. Koja vodi ka promeni. That leads to a change. E, tu je ono pomirenje Jakova i Pavla. This is where the, the reconciliation is, is very important. Tu Jakov kaže ako nema promene nema ni vere. This is where uh, James says if there's no change then there's no faith. I na kraju služba ljubavi, ja ću više mladima na engleskom svetom jeziku govoriti popodne. And, and the last piece is, is uh, uh, service through, uh, through love and I'll talk to a young people more da, about znate this. Da, engleski this najlakši jezik na svijetu. Za, zato je globalni. Popodne ćemo govoriti o službi ljubavi i o stradanju za Hrista, ali za sad u ovoj temi, broj dva, zapamtimo, dar vere vodi ka promeni. So, this afternoon we'll talk more about service through love, but for today, remember, um, dar vere vodi ka ovom obraćenju, ka promeni. So, the gift of faith leads to conversion. A vere nema bez krsta, pa skrsenja i duha svetoga, i zajednice. And there is no faith without the, without the cross, without the resurrection and the holy spirit. Ponekad mi protestanti zapostajemo to. Sveti Hristos na krstu. Sometimes we uh, as Protestants we forget this. Christ on the cross. Sveti vaskrsli Gospod. The holy resurrection. I onda sveta crkva Božja. And the holy church of God. Protestanti više idu na tendenciju da to bude zajednički socijalni klub. Protestants sometimes have a tendency to make it more of a social club. Tako da mistika svete crkve se malo izgubi. So we lose the, the meaning, the sense of the church. Ta, taj duboki smisao koji ni ne razumemo potpuno. This, this deep uh, purpose that we don't even quite fully understand. To ja moram da budem deo crkve. Why, Danas why, mladi pitaju, zašto? 
young people especially today ask why do I have to be part of a church? Pa zato što je sveta, crkva je sveta. Because it's holy, the church is holy. Toliko problema, toliko korupcije, toliko svega i svačega. Uh, so many problems, so much corruption. E pa zato što nismo čitali Pavla. Because we haven't read Paul. Svaka poslanica masa problema. In every gospel, a letter of Paul, there's a, a flurry of problems. A one odustaje da crkvu zove kako svetom crkvu. But Paul doesn't give up calling the church holy. Church. Zašto? Why? Zato što je tu poziv i sveti poziv određuje tvoj identitet. Boži poziv da budeš svet. Because there's a holy calling of God that defines your identity. Do- Hvala pastor Santos za reči. Sad na kraju naše bogosluženje otvorimo naše pesmarice i proslavimo našeg Boga sa pesmom broj 38. Tvoja pobjeda je Hristo. Pesma broj 38. se gospodu na kraju svete službe. Gospode i Bože naš koji si na nebesima, a koji si i sa nama uvek ovde dole. Our heavenly Father who is also with us here on earth. Molimo te da na osnovu onog što smo naučili ovde iz Pavlove teologije. We pray that based on what we've learned here from Paul's theology. Da shvatimo da postoji samo jedan centar. That we understand that there is only one center. U čitavom svemiru raspeti i vaskrsli Hristos. In the whole universe and that is the Christ on the cross and resurrected. Koji jedva čeka da svog duha izlije na svoju zajednicu. Who cannot wait to pour out his spirit on his community. Mi te molimo. We pray da mi that we koji smo tu i naša deca budemo deo te realnosti. We who are here and with our children that we be part of that reality. Mi te uzvišavamo i volimo zbog krsta i tvog slavnog vaskrsenja. We praise you and we love you because of the Christ and because of the glorious resurrection. Ali zbog duha kojeg ćeš nam dati da prođemo tvoj put. 
but also because of the Spirit that you will pour out on us to help us Kao go through this. Crkvene zajednice. As a holy uh, community that you have created. O problemima nećemo da ti govorimo. We will not talk to you about our problems. Jer unapred ih poznaješ. Because you know them already. Ali te molimo da tvojim duhom ohrabriš, osnažiš i ponovo podigneš ovu crkvu. But we ask that through your spirit that you strengthen and raise up this church again. Da nam daš blagoslove današnjeg dana i mir i sreću i druženje. That you give us uh, blessings of this uh, holy day and, and uh, a good fellowship together and peace. I molimo te za bivšu jugoslovensku zajednicu za sve narode ovde u Torontu. We ask for the community of from a former Yugoslavia of all the people here in Toronto. Svesni smo religije kao kulture Bože. We are uh, conscious that the religion is has become a culture as well. Ali nas ti iskoristi. But please use us. Iskoristi svoju svetu crkvu da tamo gde smo možemo reći, učiniti i misliti za druge. Uh, use this uh, church that you have raised so that we can speak, do and and think as well uh, of others. Tako da carstvo Bože napreduje i širi se. So that your kingdom, uh, the heavenly kingdom can spread. Sve do tvog slavnog dolaska. Until you're coming again. A svi znaci govore. And all the signs tell us. Da to nije toliko daleko. That it is not in the distant future. Pomozi nam u veri, u trpljenju i u stradanju. U Hristovo ime te molimo. Amen. Help us uh, in faith and, and uh, to uh, endure all the tribulations uh, with Christ. Amen.